Not that you need an introduction. We're going to welcome Phil Boyer back to the hot seat. Retirement has, has allowed you to avoid my snooty questions for, for quite a while, but let's let's get back into the swing of things. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. I'm it's it's fun to be at a show like this and uh, to be one of the aviation enthusiasts, which I've always been, but somebody who can, you know, linger at a booth, ask the questions you need to ask and not worry about the advertising or <laughs> what pilots, you know, having fifteen people come up to me and tell me what we're doing right or wrong. It's just neat. I really enjoy it, and it's back to the aviation I knew before AOPA. Well, let me ask you this. You've been in the system now as, uh, as one of us, a GA pilot, both uh, with your A36 and occasionally with the WACO you were flying and so forth. How would you judge the state of the industry? You've been to the FBOs, you've been to the service centers, you've had to have your airplane worked on, and all the things that everybody in GA does on a regular basis. How much trouble are we in? Well, the things you named, I think, are probably more positive than negative. But we're not talking about buying a new plane. But if you're talking about the state of flying a plane in the system, things are more cooperative. Obviously, a number of uh, flights are down. So we're getting more help from ATC. We're getting airports that want to keep their towers, uh, encouraging approaches, practice approaches, practice landings. I mean, even at Cincinnati's Kentucky airport, the big airport, three huge runways, fourth crosswind, they're encouraging you to fly in. And there's really no place to go once you're there other than the terminal where they're not gonna, <laughs> TSA is not gonna be happy. But I think that's positive. I feel, and it's been a long time since I've been a single engine piston on a regular basis for all the transportation, that I'm being treated like a jet jockey. I mean, really, not not as Phil Boyer, but I mean, just, I think they want to sell fuel. And if it's going to be Avgas, okay, that's the lot we're in right now. And from a standpoint, I don't think the mechanical side or the avionics side has changed that much. It's still trying to get your plane in, trying to get it out, trying to get it done in a reasonable length of time. And of course, have to pay for it. But, you know, fixing a Jaguar or Mercedes ain't cheap either. So all of that is on the positive side. How can you beat Oshkosh? and say things aren't positive just by the number of people, the excitement, the ambiance, as I call it, the Woodstock of aviation. But I think the industry itself, new plane production, trying to get people to learn to fly, other than in pockets of the country, is all down. And it's a bleak picture. And we've been saying that since you and I have talked in the, in the almost four years that I've been retired. Uh, with the big downturn in 2008, or right after I left, 2009, so I'm, I'm real concerned about that. Yet to be answered is the foreign companies buying into our domestic companies. Will that be a boost? Will we see a continuance of products we know and love and brand names? Or from those who live in Wichita or Duluth or other places, will we see jobs going across the pond on the left side this time? And so that's where it's negative. Also. It costs money to fly, and people have taken cuts in pay during these last three years, uh, haven't gotten the bonuses, and this is discretionary money for most of us. So we do look at things like fuel prices closely, how much time are we putting on the plane, etc. So it's both positive being in the system again, but not a real uh, uh, happy outlook as, as far as I can see. And I'm talking mainly about the single-engine piston line. Avidyne is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy-to-use avionics. And the new IFD 540 and 440 FMS GPS Navcoms set a new standard for ease of use and simplicity. As plug-and-play replacements for legacy 530 and 430 series navigators, the HyperTouch user interface of the IFD 540 and IFD 440 makes it much easier to access the information you want while reducing head down time and making flying more enjoyable. Now you have a choice, and the choice is easy. Avidyne. There's this question right now of whether or not the U.S. aviation market is losing its identity. And, and I'd like to switch around and ask kind of a different question about that is, while the Chinese are buying our businesses, why aren't we? Well, you know, we're in tough economic times and shareholders are, are tough on companies. They're tough on acquisitions. I live in a city with Procter & Gamble and there is a less than like 1% owner uh, of, a, of a, a block of stock, 1% of the stock, and putting pressure on the board on that company. So when you can't sell airplanes because it's a down market, 
there are probably few in the United States who are going to invest in that because it's a strange market. You have to either be in it like we are and understand it. You know, I think a lot of that happened in the real estate side. As I remember, we have a lot of our landmark buildings when I lived in New York City that were being bought up by Far East companies, Japan, China, etc. So you go where the money is, I guess, and thank goodness a company can be saved in some respects. But these aren't Kickstarter projects. I mean, <laughs> you don't ask people in the public in the United States, hey, throw in 50 bucks and we'll put you in line to buy the next new Cirrus. These are big dollars to keep these production lines open. And right now, the place in the world that has those is certainly not Europe. It's certainly in the Far East. The open-ended question is, what control will be exerted? These are still American companies with, I mean, Rock Center is not owned by Americans. Rock, the famous building in New York City, but it's still a landmark and an icon for New York City. I think we have to see whether that will be the case with these, with these companies that have been invested in. And you know, I think, I just traveled in Southeast Asia a couple months ago, and the, the businessmen there are very astute. So they didn't operate in the, they didn't invest in these to take them over and continue to run them at a loss. They took them over because they saw opportunity, which our investors here in this com- country didn't see. And I think the opportunity they see is because they're, they're, their feet are on the ground in these emerging countries that are just ripe for aviation. And they say, gee, if we have a, a piece of these companies, we may have, we can see a business model that says we know how to sell in these countries and promote aviation and deal with the governments to open the airspace. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online audio and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. Is there hope, though? I I think there's always hope. I think things run in cycles no matter what you do. We've been here with the closing down of Cessna's lines in the early 80s. Uh, We've been in in, in recessions and depressions before. I think as long as there's the excitement about flight among the general public, there is going to be a marketplace. Stimulating that market in a downtime has just been the challenge of those who are paid to do it and been very, very tough for them. But I'm an ultimate optimist. I think we're going to get past this. I don't think we're going to see the $50,000 new airplanes, but I, I sure think we're going to see innovation. And that's one thing that hasn't stopped. I mean, most of the innovation is not on airframe and engines or even gasoline at this time, but it's been in avionics and, uh, and, and some of the uh, accoutrements that go with the planes.